Bullis arrows? Well, that's a, this was a tea service that Maggie Jordan, who used to speak over the radio in Moscow, when I left in 19, the end of 1935, she gave me this tea service as a present, which had only been the first tea service that had been produced since the revolution. You, they usually use glasses and what they call stacans. And uh, I've also got three of them, incidentally. It's supposed to represent old Russia and new Russia at that time. I quite liked it there, and I was very keen to learn the language. And uh, But of course, I'd, at that time, the Seventh World Congress was on, and nearly all the interpreters were busy there, and I never had much help, so I tried to go shopping myself after f five days. I, tried to learn how to handle the money and what to ask for, so I just pointed to things. That was the first supermarket that they built in Gorky Street. I can see, uh, I don't know, Yang is Nayu, and I can do, up, do all the verbs, change them. I know the word for work, I know the word for all food, on robotic. On our robot, it, which is she, he, she, on he robot, it, on me robot him, ti robotish, on he robot it. That's him, her, she, it, and they. <laughs> In the very early stages, many of us were drawn into the movement because we were living in a society where there was massive unemployment, terrible poverty and deprivation all around us. And when we got these stories filtering back from the Soviet Union, we believed that somehow or other this should be the, the way forward in the future. That someday when the socialism was achieved in the Soviet Union, it would have demonstrated there was an alternative to all the misery and all the suffering and all the other things which are associated with the capitalist system. Of course, that was a great disappointment. But nevertheless, I don't think it eliminated much of the idealism that was held by people in the party and around the party. The Soviet Union, well, it's been a big disappointment in a way, but I don't blame them entirely for that. I think it's the fact that the whole of the world was against them, that a big part of them their product had to be spent on armaments because of the fear of the world was always against communism. But more, ha more horrible things have been done in anti-communism than there has been for communism. America has devastated Vietnam, but nothing much is said about that. Right? I happened to work for the East German trade delegation and I remember when the Berlin Wall went up and it went up to save the East Berlin currency, not to keep people in or out, but because their, their economy was being devastated because people were coming in from West Germany and buying up goods that were subsidised by the East German government. But what do you think of the, um, the events in the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe over the last couple of years? It's um, well tragic that um, the whole project has collapsed in the way it has done. But the idea of a new society, of a different type of society, will still linger on because they cannot change overnight the problems of society as they face it at the present moment. And uh, it will take a long, long time for that to come about. But I think more and more people begin to ask questions about the direction in which they are travelling, and I believe that the William Emerson Soviet Union a very powerful socialist movement once again. The whole business of the wall coming down, there was such a furor about it, and then nothing said so much about this neo-Nazism that's risen there now, and how people have lost out in work and in homes 
people are becoming homeless because other people are claiming these places now. At the bottom of all that is greed. And I don't like it at all. We have failed miserably in recruitment. We have failed miserably in the recent past in understanding the new conditions under which we live. We have passed resolutions over and over talking about a broad coalition of forces. But we have failed. Well, you can say that I cook all my own food. <laughs> I don't get meals on wheels. <laughs> Not bad when you're 88 years old. I hope the party will not be finished. It may be, a, it will be a different kind of party, I suppose. And I think that people who believe in communism should have more staying power than what these other people have, because to be a real communist, you have to have it here and here. Right for the sake of this party, they have attempted to destroy it. But I feel that it can be destroyed here today, and that's in your hands. Okay, comrades, the tellers all in position already. Could I say that we do intend to count this vote, so please hold your cards up straight and still so that the tellers can carry out their count properly. <coughs> project might be a disaster. That's right. But at this, at this point in time, you've got to take a, a fundamental decision. That's right. Is there any prospect of survival or achieving anything worthwhile if you follow the democratic road? My answer is no. Absolutely no. But you see, I was brought up in a socialist family, and I went to socialist Sunday school. Well, I went in all I went to socialist Sunday school. Yes. Do, you remember the, do you remember the wonderful uh, commandments that we had? There was one that said, observe and think in order to discover the truth. Never believe that which is contrary to reason. And never deceive yourself or others. And I've always remembered that. I thought it was a marvelous command. Well, my daughter's idea of putting the family history in chronological order and she made me start this album because she... And this is my mother and father. My father was born in Siberia, of all places. My mother in Lithuania. And this is my father's workshop in Dublin, which he went to start for a firm called B. Himes and & Company. And this is myself about uh, 18... So... This is where, how we used to spend our Sundays out in the country. Uh, this is taken in Fintry, and uh, most of these young people were in the party at that time, and uh, some of them were unemployed, and they had this 